Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss uh, another breaking scandal related to the Nigel Farage banking meltdown, as it's reported that the uh, one of the founders of GB News has made millions of pounds from the NatWest share drop. Another reminder that we might need to be a little bit more careful when considering who should be allowed to run our news media, because it is rarely for our benefit. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So let's look at what The Telegraph is reporting first, then break it down a little. So the article claims that GB News owner Sir Paul Marshall arranged his hedge fund to benefit from NatWest shares falling. Now, we've come across this concept before, haven't we? Short derivatives. It's a, a form of investment which is essentially betting that the share price of something falls. We talked about shorting the pound uh, for a lot of Brexiteers, for example, which is betting that the pound will fall. And there were times when it was suspected that there was a little bit of insider trading going on. Certain investors knowing that the government were about to make an announcement which would cause the value of the pound to drop, you know. However, this one may be, in theory, much more innocent, but the potential for a conflict of interest is huge. Because on the one hand, Paul Marshall arranged his investments to benefit from a share drop in NatWest. And then his TV station pushed a tax on NatWest very heavily culminating in the sudden resignation of the hitherto respected chief executive and a sudden drop in share price, which was hugely in Marshall's financial interests. Sounds incredibly dodgy, doesn't it? Bizarre to think, absolutely bizarre to think this man has his political roots in the Liberal Democrats party, although he did leave because of his support for EU membership, which makes his support for GB News obvious. Um, and ever since then, he's been a Conservative Party donor. Now, taking a step back, we can see that the report said that Marshall took his position months ago, all long before Nigel Farage, Farage had his bust up with the Coots Bank, which is owned by NatWest. The article notes that investments like this are often sorted automatically using computer software. True enough. So then you ask yourself, OK, so it may be it, there's no there's not necessarily any skullduggery about his decision um, to bet against NatWest, for example. But given that Marshall would benefit financially from NatWest losing investor confidence, is this why GB News heavily promoted Farage's crusade against them? Now, if I step back and I'm completely honest, I would say no. I think they would have done it regardless. Be interesting if we could see a parallel universe to wonder what GB News would have done if Marshall was betting on NatWest improving its share value. In other words, if his investments were set up to gain from NatWest gaining. I wonder if GB News would have pushed it then. But that is, of course, speculation because I can't see into other parallel universes. So, but knowing how GB News operate and their fondness for scandal and outrage, the way they've been reporting on this banking scandal does fit their modus operandum. There was nothing unusual in it. I wasn't sat there scratching my head wondering, why are GB News going at this so hard? And then the scales fell from my eyes when I read, ah, it's because their owner gains financially. All seems like it was just everything independently working in their own different interests, that's all. But, and it's a big but, we nonetheless have a situation whereby the share price of NatWest dropped, costing the UK taxpayer hundreds of millions of pounds, really, because it's you know we invest in it. And a news media owner who was betting on a share drop, whose media outlet was pushing for this outcome. Now, whether coincidence or not in this case, it highlights the dangers of allowing investments to have, investors to have rather, major influence on events. And the media has a major influence on events. You know, because it wasn't just GB News reporting it. You know, their seven viewers aren't going to do very much. It, it, they got it through the rest of the mainstream media as well. And, and, you know, really, the reason why it's so dangerous is investments are partly about the success and failure of the business, but they're mostly about confidence. It's incredibly dangerous to have people with a potential conflict of interest run our news media any more than it is running our government. And it's nothing new, of course. It's long been the case in the UK that a small group of very wealthy individuals owns the mainstream news media in order to convince people of the merits of political choices which always make the public poorer and the media barons richer. They persuade people to mostly vote Conservative. Then they make sure the grateful Conservative ministers return the favour with quid pro quos. And if they start being difficult, they just publish stories attacking the government and giving the opposition 
um, you know, some sustenance. Peter Dukes of Byline Times has argued that hedge fund owners should never be allowed to own a media company that can move markets. I'd go further, rule out quite a lot of people from media ownership. You know, I've said in the past, I would certainly ban foreign ownership of the media. That wouldn't apply to Marshall. You know, to qualify as living in the UK, though, they'd need their dainty little feet grounded in the UK for at least 10 months of the year. There's no need for more than two months away for genuine business purposes. I'd also make it a requirement that their investments have to be basically based in the UK as well. I don't mean, you know, you can own a business abroad. That's fine. But not sending your money abroad to get out of paying our taxes. Several things you could do. You can restrict the number of uh, media outlets, for example. Now, admittedly, none of these things would have stopped Marshall investing in GB News, but maybe you could also rule out people with certain investment decisions as well. If, if people have got, uh, if people are making decisions in terms of major investments, maybe they shouldn't be making decisions in terms of what is reported. That's true. But however it's done, whatever we do, we absolutely need to have faith that when national media outlets are presenting the news, that they're doing just that. Not trying to steer the markets in a way that enhances their personal payday. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.